Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall go through the Handy Page Halifax B Mark III Bombers engine startup sequence. We shall be referring to the 1944 Air Ministry Pilots Notes. I hope you find this interesting. We'll start with the required preliminaries. Before entering the aircraft, Check that the engine, cockpit and pitot head covers are off. Carry out a visual check for oil and fuel leaks and that engine cowlings are secure. Check tyres for cuts and creep and undercarriage oleo legs for even compression. Check that the undercarriage accumulator pressure is at a minimum of 250 pounds per square inch. On entering the aircraft, the crew should check for the following. That all loose equipment is stowed. All gun turrets are central and engaged. All controls are unlocked and locking gear is stowed. Ensure the ground flight switch is set to flight. Check all indicators and lights. Check the tailwheel accumulator pressure is 250 pounds per square inch. The flaps accumulator pressure is 1050 pounds per square inch with the flaps up and 700 pounds per square inch when the flaps are down. Unscrew the flaps isolating cock so the up locks are disengaged and clips secured. Check the bomb door's accumulator pressure is 600 pounds per square inch with the doors closed and 400 pounds per square inch when the doors are open. Check the fuel cross feed cocks are off and check the fuel contents gauges. Before starting the engines, check the following. That the flaps are selected up and the landing lamp is retracted. The undercarriage lever is down and the flaps and bomb door levers are neutral. Brake pressure brakes on. Check movement of the flying controls. Check oxygen capacity and flow. Test the visual cool light system. If all is OK, proceed to start the engines as follows. The engine starting and booster coil switches, gills, temperature gauges, pressure gauges and indicators are all under the charge of the flight engineer. But the pilot should be in his seat to see that the following sequence of actions is carried out. The engine should be started in turn. An engine should not be primed until its turn for starting comes. Have the trolley ac, that's the ground battery, plugged in and the ground flight switch turned to ground. Turn on the master engine cocks and instruct the flight engineer to turn on fuel tanks 1 and 3. Set the engine controls as follows. Throttles. Move to just off the rear stops. Mixture control, if fitted, set to down. Propeller control, set fully up. Superchargers, set to M ratio. Air intake heat control, set to cold air. Gills, set to open. Have each engine turn slowly by hand for at least two revolutions to avoid the danger of hydraulicking. The pilot must switch on the ignition for the port outer engine. Then once receiving instructions, the flight engineer must press the starter and booster coil buttons. Turning periods must not exceed 20 seconds with a 30 second wait between each. 
The ground crew will work the priming pump while the engine is being turned. It will probably be necessary to continue priming after the engine has fired and until it picks up on the carburetor. When the engine is running satisfactorily, the flight engineer should remove his finger from the booster coil button. The ground crew will now screw down the priming pump and turn off the priming cocks. Repeat the procedure for each engine. Once all engines are running, open up each engine gradually to 1000 revs per minute and warm up at this speed. Set the DR as the direct reading compass to on and setting. Check the trolley app is disconnected and that the ground flight switch is set to flight. Whilst the engines are warming up, check the temperatures and pressures and test operation of the hydraulic system by lowering and raising the flaps. Testing each magneto as a precautionary check. After warming up, and for each engine in turn, comprehensive checks should be carried out after repair or at the pilot's discretion. Open up to 1,500 revs per minute. Exercise and check operation of the two-speed supercharger. The oil pressure should drop momentarily at each change and the revs per minute should fall when S ratio is engaged. Return control to the M ratio. At plus two pounds per square inch boost, check the operation of the constant speed propeller. Return lever fully up. Open the throttle and check takeoff boost and static revs per minute, which should be 2800 at takeoff boost. Throttle back until boost is below plus six pounds per square inch and a slight drop in revs per minute is noted. If all is well, it's time to taxi the aircraft. Well that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And make sure you also ring the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.